Welcome to Stories That Matter. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my special guest, Elizabeth Howard. Elizabeth, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for, for asking me. And I've been looking at a couple of books that you have, and the first one was Tickle, Tickle, Your Steps Are Ordered. And the second one is Tickle, Tickle, Feathers Travel. Tell me about the books. The first book, Tickle, Tickle, Your Steps Are Ordered, was um, I had written that book 2011, 2011. And the Lord told me that in the last days that families were going to be separated, torn apart, that different things were going to happen in families, and that um, what happened to me in 2007 was something I never, never dreamed of anything that as far as I've been in church all my life, I never dreamed anything like this would happen with my family. We were a very close family. My two boys uh, went to Bible college and then they, they got married. Um, and so, um, but my youngest one, um, this, this book was written um, for, for him actually, because like I said, the, um, the families are, the, Satan's out to kill, steal and destroy. And the families are who they're after. So whenever it, you know, whenever God gave me the, the book, he gave me the, uh, the cover of what it would be. He gave me a vision and told me that I would write a book. And then it was confirmed many, many times. One of the confirmations that Doug, I never shared with you, but um, I woke up one morning, I was listening to the Bible. And then, and when I, when I turned on the, the Bible as for audio, you know, where it would read to me, uh, it was found in Jeremiah. And it says, thus said the Lord, you know, um, whatever I, whatever you uh, see, write it down in a book. And I think it's Jeremiah 30 and one, I believe. But anyway, I knew that it was, it was time for me to write that book. And then an evangelist sent me an email, didn't even know that I was thinking about writing a book. And he said, I think it's time for you to write a book. So, and then what was so cool was there was a feather. Have you ever seen things in the clouds and, you know, different shapes? Doug, there was a feather sure. in the clouds. And I said, Lord, I think it's time for me to write this book. But on the back of the, the book, it said, just an ordinary family, just an ordinary day, just an ordinary phone call. No, it was my family that was torn apart by a false accusation. It was my son and granddaughter who were taken away. It was my heart and reputation that was ruined that very day when my son called with news that, and then I left it there. So I thought maybe it would cause somebody to think about what they're going through. Because like I said, God told me in the last days, there's scripture all through this book to let you know that no matter what you go through, that, um, that the, your steps are ordered. And that's what the Lord told me when this happened. He said, God said, Carolyn, I will uphold you. I will preserve you. I will sustain you. Your steps are ordered. And I remember raising up from the bed because I was crying because my son had just accused me and taken away my granddaughter. And I said, I got up and I said, God, how could my steps be ordered? Did you just hear what they said to me? And the Lord said, I will be with you. And I knew that God had, he had a plan. And I never dreamed that it would be a book. So in 2011, there was, um, I can't wait for you to, I know you read it, Doug. And um, you made me feel very, um, I, I'm, I mean, I know it's Holy Spirit led, but I felt very good that you um, got something out of it, a message. And I believe Tickle Tickle, Your Steps Are Ordered, the first one has ministered. It has, I have got to minister on TV as well. I've got to, to minister in ladies groups. But most of all, the Lord said, I will, he, he put an anointing on me. And Doug, I've seen people healed. I've seen people delivered. I've seen people just cry and said, you know, that this has happened to me, not as bad, but I, I had a lady in the church 
her son turned against her. And she told me, she said, if this hadn't happened to you, Elizabeth, I would not know what to do. I would have gone just, I would have lost it. But I've seen all these years that you've gone through this and you've kept your faith, your faith in God. And God has showed you so many things. You've written the book. It has helped so many people. It's chock full of scripture. And then the tickle, tickle feathers travel. First um, chapter in the book that I've got here is um, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. And that if you remember that, if you look in there, God gave me a dream and in a vision, I knew that I would be going to Austin, Texas is where my son was. And I knew that I would be, uh, I mean, he told me, but he said, you won't see your son. And I thought, Lord, why am I going to Austin and not see my son? And it was, it was amazing. You've got to read the book. I, I know Doug, you read it, but I'm, I'm hoping that, that they'll, um, that the others will want to see this, this, what this vision meant. But what, what happened in that is yes, I did go to Austin and I remember going and we were we were at a, a railroad uh, crossing. And I, do you remember this part where the, the train, I mean, it was stuck on the track. And so we were sitting there. We were sitting there. I had I had uh, my sister and a and, um, couple of friends with me, but we were sitting there and um, waiting for the train to 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 pass, you know, so we could go over because that's where my son worked. And so anyway, um, what the miracle was, there was a man that was, um, he was walking down the road and my sister said, why don't you ask him? And I said, sure. You know, so I rolled down the window and this is what's so amazing. I rolled down the window and I asked him and he said, well, he said, ma'am, he said, that train's been on that track all day long. And then I looked down the track and the, the train was broken. I mean, it was it was stopped. And um, I remember he said, but and I, 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 I will never forget this. He said that train, he took his finger and he traced down that track. He said that train is moving as we speak. And I said, wow. Praise the Lord. And he goes, yes, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. You know, I was just praising the Lord and he was agreeing with me. I thought that was so cool. But, you know, I truly believe that was an angel. I do. How in the world could somebody take their finger and trace down the track and the, and the train is moving? And what's so cool, if you, if you remember in my story, what's so cool is that just as it passed, the bars came up and um, the train stopped on down the road and we crossed uh, the, the track. That's a miracle. And it's it and I kept miracle. singing, not by might, not by power. And I just kept singing that, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And I was so excited. I was, but yes, my sister did get to, to see my son. He was there at, at his job at work. And um, she talked to him and she told him, she said, I want to tell you something. She said, your mom loves you. And uh, she, first of all, she said she loved him and she gave him a big hug. And she said, I just want you to know your mom and dad love you. Well, it upset him. He goes, you're going to have to leave. And so she left, but she comes out and she thought I was going to be so upset. And I knew that dream, the, this is where the dream came in. I knew God said you wouldn't get to see him, but at least somebody touched him. Somebody loved on him. I knew he was there and I knew God was in it. And then um, on the chapter two, it says, I will fight for you. Well, um, whenever uh, in 2017, I had gone to Puerto Rico and um, the, we had a few days before the convention. It, it was the work, work convention, you know, work deal. And um, we'd gone to Puerto Rico and we went to the rainforest. And um, I remember 
I was there and I got bit by a spider in Puerto Rico. And it, the, the venom was so bad. You know, remember me quoting you the scripture that, that the thief comes not but for to steal, to kill. Satan was, he, he hates, he hated me. And he, yes. he tried his best. I'm serious to take me out. But what was so cool was not that the spider bite, the, the bite was so bad. I ended up in the emergency room twice, ambulance twice. Um, the blood clots were so bad in my legs. Uh, the poison, that spider was very venomous. They said it was one of the most poisoned there in Puerto Rico. And, um, but the blood clots were so bad, they filled up both legs and the doctor had put a filter in and he didn't give me any blood thinner. That's what created more blood clots. When you don't get blood thinner and you've got blood clots, you've got to have something. So they just, they just started, you know, getting worse and worse. And so I ended up in the um, hospital. They were doing a ultrasound and there was this one lady that was with me and uh, the, the guy that does the ultrasound, he was in the back, but I remember I was, I was laying on that. Um, what's it called where they do the ultrasound, you know? And I remember seeing this beautiful blonde headed lady. And she said, cause I was praying. I said, Oh God, cause I was in pain that, um, that uh, blood clot was pulsating. And that's what sent me in an ambulance. But um, the lady looked at me and she said, God will make a way where there seems no way. I will fight for you. I didn't understand it. I just was so thankful that she had told me that, that, you know, that he would make a way that he wouldn't put more upon me. Now, that wasn't scripture, but, you know, the, the Lord told me that from, from, from the time that what happened with Kevin I won't put upon you more than what you can bear. You know, people quote that, but God means it. You know, he, he, he's going to be there with you. So you, you can bear because the Lord takes it, you know? And so anyway, when she said that, I said, thank you. And they went ahead and put me in and I was praying in the spirit. I was praying, God, please. I haven't seen my son. At that time, I think it was probably about uh, 13, 12, 12 years, something like that. That was 2017. And it still was a long time not seeing my son. And um, I knew that there was just, I knew my, my heart was right if, if God was going to take me. But I, I wasn't ready for, you know, I wanted my, I wanted my son. I wanted my son. I wanted to see my family, my granddaughters. And so anyway, when they rolled me back out, she was on my right hand side and she took me by the hand because she she was, you know, I know she heard me pray and I'm sure she did. But I was praying, God, I don't want to die, you know. But anyway, she was on the right hand side then and she took me by the hand and she said, my child, my child, your mansion is not yet completed. Yeah. And in other words, you will live and not die. So that alone gave me such peace. I cannot explain the peace when death is trying to take you. And the Lord says he sent an angel. He sent an angel because I asked the hospital. I said, um, who is that lady? Thank you so much. He said, we don't have um, anybody in here while they're doing the ultrasound. <laughs> I thought, and I, and I, and I, sh I shared with them. I said, her eyes were beautiful. She had blonde hair. I said, she was so gentle, so kind. Cause I thought I was dying. Well, Elizabeth, and, and, and that's, uh, that's one of the important parts about the book, how the Lord was there for you and right. brought the angel in no question about it. That's one of the reasons why your book is so good of a read. Now tell me, uh, in both of the covers, I see one where the suitcase is opening and there's feathers coming out. And in the first one, there's a picture of a feather. Tell me, tell me what's the, what's the purpose of the feathers in the book? Now the first one, the, like I said, the Lord gave me um, 
exactly what it was supposed to be, tickle, tickle with a beautiful fluffy white feather and your steps are ordered. And then, um, and the second one, um, a friend of mine came to see me and she was um, to, from Texarkana and she, her and her, her sister came to see me and she comes in my kitchen and she said, look what I found. And it was a beautiful white feather. And she, and, and I said, oh my goodness, where did you get that, Debbie? And she said, it's, it's in my suitcase. And I know that sounds crazy, but it's the truth. And so um, the, uh, a friend of mine said, well, feathers travel. And that's where that came from, because um, whenever I thought about um, what to do on my second book, I thought feathers travel. I love it. And I love the idea of the feathers being in the suitcase. My husband had a lot to do with this one. And uh, I mentioned it. And then uh, Joe Potter was my, um, he did the artwork. And I sent him just, you've seen some of my drawings. I'm not an artist, but I've seen, I've seen some of the, the different uh, pictures that people, you know, have, have made and um, on, on, you know, suitcases and things. And so I thought I could draw that. So anyway, she, he um, he found this old suitcase, perfect, and I wanted the feathers to just fly up to the sky and 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 you know like you, well if you'll show the book in a minute, um, you can see the feathers are going straight to heaven, and I believe the feathers. I, I know I'm not you know I don't promise that you'll find a feather, but I have a whole different outlook with feathers now. Uh, to me, um, I realized that um, even I had a friend to say, when I see a feather, I know my steps are ordered. So, yeah. I mean, it's. And, and I appreciate it. Uh, the, the concept with the feathers is amazing. We're going to put up on the screen one of the, uh, I think it's probably the drawing from uh, the first book. And uh, it's uh, the picture of the feather on there. And you actually drew that in the back of the I book did. on like page 97 of it. Right. And so tell me about the picture because we're going to put it up on the screen that folks can take a look at. Tell me what the symbolism is for this. Well, Doug, whenever I was, when I sent you the picture, the feather, um, the Joe Potter, the one that is the book to, uh, did the book art, the art for the cover. He told me to draw a feather and he said, um, if you'll just let me know what you want, you know, for your cover, then I, you know, I can, I can look and see if I can find a, a feather or whatever. So I told him, I said, okay. I said, I'm not an artist, but yeah, yeah, I will. So I was at in the kitchen at the kitchen bar and I got an ink pen, not a pencil, but I got an ink pen and I just started drawing a feather. And I thought I want it to tickle, tickle, tickle. You know, I want it to be fluffy. But when you take a feather, you want to tickle, tickle. And so um, I started drawing it. And I thought, I looked at it and I thought, that looks pretty good. I think I can do this. So I draw it one, uh, once again. And the second time I, I started singing, I surrender all. I surrender all, all to thee. And then my hand started going this way and that way and this way and that way. You know, and I thought, this is different, totally different. And it's not the same feather that I drew the first time. And so now what is amazing is when you print that feather out, if you want to show it, um, my sister, when I showed her the feather, she said, I see pictures in here. I see, I see um, the eagle head. And I told her, I said, Nita, my Aunt Joy told me this when this first happened in 2007, where, kept, where my son um, accused me, my aunt told me she knew I didn't do it. And she said, I see you as a mighty eagle soaring above the storm. And I and and that's what's in the second. That's what's in my second book. I talk about the eagles and how they get excited when a storm comes. 
because when a storm comes, people get scared. Eagles don't. They use that wind to lift them so high above the storm. So they're not worried about the storm. That's that's their, you know, that's the way they can soar. And so anyway, I uh, uh, Nita told me, she said, I see so much more. And um, at the at the very tip, I talk about in my first book, I talk about um, the promise, the rainbow, the promise that God, you know, gave to man not to destroy the earth with with a flood. And our rainbow represents his promise. Well, God gave me that promise, Doug. He said, I will uphold you, preserve you, and sustain you. And so whenever we looked at the front of that, and if you, did you notice when I, when you printed it out, how you can, did you, did you see the, the Noah's Ark in there? Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. And there's a lot of symbolism in that, and that's why we're putting it up on the screen. And uh, I want people to be able to go to that. And it's on page 97 of the first book that you drew that out. And the first time when I looked through your book, I saw that and I said, well, that's interesting. But then when you and I had that conversation and you pointed that out, and then I studied it a little bit, and it's absolutely amazing. Elizabeth, you've done a fantastic job. And I want people to be able to get that book, both books. And so we're gonna put your, uh, a website up on the screen and the people can take a look at it and tickle tickle is a pretty deep book and and the symbolism of it is absolutely amazing elizabeth and thank you so much for taking time to visit with me today but we're going to put that information out because i want a lot of people who are going through difficult times in their life some people who don't know the lord are looking for where do i go what door do i go through and your book will help to lead some through. Others who are walking with the Lord said, Lord, I understand. It's just like the example that you gave at the uh, hospital in the surgery. And you tell, thank them for the woman who was there. And they, we don't have anybody in there with you. Well, you know you had an angel in there with you. And I she did. was taking care of I you did. and leading you. You got it. So, Elizabeth, thank you so much for writing those books. And uh, we'll put your information up on the website. And uh, God bless you and your family. Thank you. One thing, uh, Doug, is don't let anybody or anything steal your joy. The joy of the Lord is what people are needing. Amen. That tickle tickle makes you laugh. You got it. Thank you, Elizabeth. You have a good day and thanks for visiting with us. Thank you for having me and I pray it blesses others um, knowing that God is in control. Thank you. You've been watching Stories That Matter with Elizabeth Howard. Thanks for watching.